Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Manoj Singh Rana with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow to launch and lay foundation stones of various development projects. Prime Minister shares all possible help to heavy rain affected Uttarakhand rescue and relief operations in full swing. Met Department forecasts heavy to very heavy rainfall in some places in Kerala during next two days. Fishermen asked not to venture into the sea till the 22nd of this month. Over 99 crore doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate stands at 98.14%. Centre asked states and union territories to enhance second dose coverage of COVID vaccination. Maharashtra government relaxes COVID-19 restrictions, allows restaurants to function till midnight. Army Chief General M.M. Narvane visits forward areas along LOC in Jammu region to take stock of counter-infiltration operations. eid e miladun nabi birthday of Prophet Muhammad, celebrated across the country. And in T20 World Cup cricket, India to clash with Australia in second practice match in Dubai tomorrow. As India is on the verge of vaccinating 100 crore people against COVID-19, All India Radio salutes all the doctors, nurses and others who made this possible. At the same time, we caution our listeners that the battle against COVID is not yet over. We appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated. During the festival season, please follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Uttar Pradesh tomorrow. The Prime Minister will inaugurate the Kushinagar International Airport. Kushinagar is the place where Gautam Buddh attained Mahaparinirvana. Mr. Modi will participate in an event marking Abhidham Day at Mahapari Nirvan Temple. He will also attend a public function to inaugurate and lay the foundation stone of various development projects in Kushinagar. The inauguration of the Kushinagar International Airport will be marked by the landing of the inaugural flight at the airport from Colombo in Sri Lanka, carrying Sri Lankan delegation of over 100 Buddhist monks and dignitaries, including the 12-member Holy Relic Entourage, bringing the Holy Buddha relics for exposition. More from our correspondent. The inauguration of Kushinagar International Airport, which will be held tomorrow, is symbolic of the major developmental change taking place in the Purvanchal region of Uttar Pradesh. The region's three prominent cities, Ayodhya, Varansi and Gorakhpur, are on the path of remarkable development. The ongoing construction of Ram Mandir in Ayodhya and development projects worth crores of rupees will change the entire demography of the region in coming years. Major development projects are being implemented in Varansi, the constituency of Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi. Recently, the inauguration of Rudraksh Convention Center as a symbol of Indo-Japan friendship and beginning of cruise service in the Ganga from Kashi to the Chunar Fort in Mirzapur are few such examples. The Kashi Vishwanath Corridor development project is also nearing completion. In Gorakhpur too, various development projects are going on and many others have been inaugurated. The state's first Ayush University is coming up in Gorakhpur. Ames and fertilizer plant are also ready and will be inaugurated soon. The city also houses a zoo. Associate Professor in Buddha PG College Kushinagar and local resident Dr. Gaurav Tiwari says Purvanchal ki pahchan पिछले पांच सात वर्षों में बदली है पहले यह क्षेत्र गैंगवार के लिए फिर इंसेफ्लाइटिस के लिए अपने पिछड़ेपन के लिए ज्यादा कुख्यात हुआ करता था लेकिन जब से गोरखपुर में एम्स बना है फर्टिलाइजर का कारखाना फिर शुरू हुआ है ये नेशनल हाईवे जो बंगाल से लेकर के और अमृतसर तक जा रहा है यह अच्छा हुआ है और अब कुशीनगर अंतर्राष्ट्रीय हवाई अड्डे का प्रधानमंत्री के द्वारा उद्घाटन हो रहा है इसने इस क्षेत्र के स्वरूप को बदल कर रख दिया है 
अब यह क्षेत्र नई संभावनाओं के लिए जाना जाने लगा है और यह महसूस हो रहा है कि यह पिछड़ापन जो अब तक अभिशाप के रूप में यहाँ पर था वह इससे मुक्त हो जाएगा और विकास के नए रास्तों को खोजेगा द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ वेरियस एक्सप्रेस वे इंक्लूडिंग पूर्वांचल एक्सप्रेस वे गोरखपुर लिंक एक्सप्रेस वे बलिया लिंक एक्सप्रेस वे एंड इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर टू बी डेवलप अराउंड दीज एक्सप्रेस वे विल बूस्ट बिजनेस एंड अट्रैक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द रीजन विद डॉक्टर विवेक पांडे इन कुशीनगर आदित्य शुक्ला ए आई आर न्यूज गोरखपुर The Prime Minister will also lay the foundation stone of Rajkia Medical College at Kushinagar which will be built at a cost of over 280 crore rupees. The Met Department has said isolated heavy to very heavy rainfall is likely in some places in Kerala during the next 2 days. Orange alert has been issued for tomorrow for 11 districts in the state except for Kollam, Alappuzha and Kasaragod. Similar alert has been issued for 12 districts on Thursday barring Kannur and Kasaragod. Wind speeds reaching 40 to 50 kilometers per hour, thunderstorms and lightning are also likely. Fishermen have been asked not to venture into the sea till the 22nd of this month. Meanwhile, water from three dams Pamba, Edamarayar and Idukki were released today as a precautionary measure. A report from our Kochi correspondent While many parts of Kerala are still struggling to come to terms with the havoc unleashed by rains during the past 4 days the danger seems to be far from over more rains are predicted 10 dams across the state are on red alert already and water is being released from several reservoirs as a precautionary measure dams are being constantly monitored to regulate the water level in the reservoirs today water from three dams pamba idamalayar and idikki were released to accommodate more inflow from the catchment areas This was carried out in a well-planned manner, issuing necessary warning to the public in advance. Raj Mohan, AR News, Kochi. In Uttarakhand, heavy rain claimed 25 lives in Kumaon region today, taking the death toll in the rain-related incidents to 30 in the state. Relief and rescue operations are going on in full swing in rain-affected areas of the state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today spoke to Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami and inquired about the relief and rescue operation and the damage caused by heavy rain in the state. The Chief Minister said that the Prime Minister has assured that all possible help would be given to the state. Our Dehradun correspondent reports that the Chief Minister conducted an aerial inspection of the affected areas today. Heavy rains have caused maximum loss of life and property in Kumaon region. A total of 25 deaths have been reported from Nainital, Almora and Champawat district today, while five people died in Garhwal region yesterday. The rescue operation is being carried out on war footing at various places by the army, ITPP, SDRF and NDRF along with the district administration. The help of army helicopters is also being taken for rescue work. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami along with Cabinet Minister Dhan Singh Rawat and DGP Ashok Kumar conducted an aerial survey of disaster affected areas and took stock about the damages caused by the heavy rains he urged the people that there is no need to panic and the government will extend all possible help to every disaster affected victim sanjeev sundrial air news dehradun india is inching towards the 100 crore vaccination mark more than 99 crore doses of covid-19 vaccine have been administered in the country so far in a tweet union health minister mansukh mandavya said the country is continuing to rapidly march towards the milestone of 100 crore covid-19 vaccinations talking to ir news dr naresh trehan of medanta hospital said the vaccination exercise is a tool to protect the most vulnerable population groups in the country from covid-19 This is a very significant move forward because it protects the population from one getting the covid to even if they get it that it's a very mild form. We have seen the results of the people who have been vaccinated and gradually the vaccine hesitancy has also come down. So now we expect to keep moving. This is complements to the government and also the participation of the private sector in accomplishing this big landmark event. We feel now that we are fast approaching the herd immunity where natural immunity plus the vaccine immunity will protect india in the coming months from the onslaught of covid-19 india reported more than 13000 new cases during the last 24 hours which is the lowest in 231 days the ministry said the recovery rate is currently at 98.14% the highest since march last year over 19000 people recovered while 164 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours The center has asked the states and union territories to identify and prioritize districts 
having low COVID-19 vaccination coverage for focused action and explore the requirements for mobilization of efforts addressing local challenges, need for additional vaccination centers and improving access in rural areas. They have also been urged to share their strategies to enhance second dose coverage. In Maharashtra, in order to give further impetus to the economy, the state government today said that all restaurants and eateries would be allowed to function till midnight. The order issued by State Chief Secretary Sitaram Kunte said that all other establishments have been allowed to function till 11 p.m. The decision to allow shops to extend the timings comes in the wake of festive season as the state government felt that restrictions on time of functioning may lead to more crowding in a shorter duration. In our bilingual live phone-in program, Corona Jagrukta series, Professor Dr. N. N. Mathur of Lady Harding Medical College will be with us today to answer the queries related to coronavirus. Listeners can ask questions to the expert on toll-free number 1-800-115767 and on telephone number 011 2331 you can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by using the hashtag AskAIR. This live phone-in program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. onwards. Army Chief General M.M. M. Narvane visited the forward areas along the line of control LOC in the Jammu region today. During his visit to the forward areas along the LOC, the Army Chief was briefed on the ground situation in the region and about the ongoing counter-infiltration operations. General Naravane visited forward areas of the White Knight Corps and undertook a first-hand assessment of the situation along the line of control. The COAS was briefed by commanders on the ground about the present situation and ongoing counter-infiltration operations. The visit of the COAS comes at a time when there has been a slew of killings of civilians, including non-locals in the Kashmir Valley. Meanwhile, the administration, as well as the police authorities, are making all-out efforts to instill confidence and ensure a sense of safety among citizens, minorities and the non-locals in Kashmir Valley following a spate of civilian killings this month. While security reviews and meetings are held at higher levels of the civil and police administrations, measures are being taken at district level as well. Recently, Senior Superintendent of Police Gandharbal Nikhil Borkar chaired a joint security review meet with the officers of police, commandants of 24 Rashtriya Rifles, 34 Assam Rifles, 118 Battalion and 115 Battalion of Central Reserve Police Force and discussed threadbare different security measures taken for ensuring peace and stability in Gandharbal district. The SSP Gandharbal appreciated the efforts of police and other security agencies for maintaining stability in the district and emphasized synergy and better coordination with one another at ground level to maintain the peaceful environment and security in the district. He urged upon the officers to strengthen the general security grid of their respective areas of responsibility for ensuring peace and stability, besides taking stringent action against those involved in anti-national activities. The officer also directed all the SHOs of the district to put in place all the measures for maintaining peace, law and order, and ensure security and safety of the people. As per a senior police official, similar measures are being taken in other districts of the valley so that confidence is instilled to the fear-stricken masses in Kashmir. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with chief executive officers and experts of global oil and gas sector tomorrow via video conferencing. This is sixth such annual interaction which began in 2016. This marks the participation of global leaders in the oil and gas sector which deliberate upon key issues of the sector and explore potential areas of collaboration and investment with India. The broad theme of the upcoming interaction is promotion of clean growth and sustainability. The interaction will focus on areas like encouraging exploration and production in hydrocarbon sector in India, energy independence, gas-based economy, emissions reduction through clean and energy efficient solutions, green hydrogen economy, enhancement of biofuels production and waste to wealth creation. You're listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow to launch and lay foundation stones of various development projects. 
Prime Minister assures all possible helps to heavy rain affected Uttarakhand rescue and relief operations in full swing. Med Department forecasts heavy to very heavy rainfall in some places in Kerala during next two days. Fishermen asked not to venture into sea till the 22nd of this month. Over 99 crore doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far, recovery rate stands at 98.14%. Center asked states and union territories to enhance second dose coverage of COVID vaccination. Maharashtra government relaxes COVID-19 restrictions, allows restaurants to function till midnight. Army Chief General M. M. Narvane visits forward areas along LOC in Jammu region to take stock of counter-infiltration operations. eid Miladun nabi birthday of Prophet Muhammad celebrated across the country. And in T20 World Cup cricket, India to clash with Australia in second practice match in Dubai tomorrow. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. स्वाधीनता संग्राम के वे निशान जो साक्षी हैं हमारे सेनानियों के संघर्ष और बलिदान के आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष श्रृंखला निशान हर बुधवार को शाम चार बजकर पैंतालीस मिनट पर कार्यक्रम परिक्रमा में एफएम गोल्ड सौ दशमलव एक मेगा हर्ट्स पर वेलकम बैक टू द इवनिंग न्यूज Eid e Milad un Nabi, the birthday of Prophet Muhammad, was celebrated in various parts of the country today. In most places, major processions were not held in view of corona restrictions. However, in some states, authorities allowed Milad processions on a reduced scale with limited number of people. Milad mehfils and seerat conferences were organized adhering to COVID protocols and through online platform also, where ulemas or religious scholars highlighted the life and teachings of Hazrat Muhammad. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day. On 19th of October 1888, B. Ramalingam Pillai, popularly known as Namakkal Kavinyar, was born at Mohanur in Namakkal district in Tamil Nadu to Venkataraman and Ammani Ammal. His father worked in police department. He did his BA in 1909 from Bishop Heber College at Tiruchi. Initially, he worked as a clerk at Namakal Tahisildar's office and later worked as a primary school teacher. He wrote hundreds of poems with patriotic fervor. He also participated in the Salt Satyagraha against the British government in 1930 and went to jail for one year. His novels and songs enlightened the youth of Tamil Nadu about the freedom movement and Gandhian ways of fighting with the enemy. Ramalingam Pillai who was fondly called as nationalist poet, wrote, Without sword and without blood, a war is being waged. Those who believe in the immortality of truth 
can join without hesitation gandhi endra saanda murthi therndu kaattum senneri maandaru kutti maikundra vaindha deeva maargame his novel malai kallan was made into a tamil film post independence and became a super hit film and won president's medal for best film This film was later remade in Hindi as Azad. His poems on the pride of being an Indian and Tamil and his verses on Khadi are being quoted even today in Tamil Nadu. He received the Padma Bhushan award in 1971. Nirmala Deshpande was born to Vimala and Purushottam Yashwant Deshpande in Nagpur on the 19th of October 1929. Her father was the recipient of the Sahitya Akademi Award in 1962 for his work in Marathi Anamikachi Chintanika. She did MA in Political Science from Nagpur. She also studied at Ferguson College Pune. Thereafter, She served as lecturer in political science in Morris College, Nagpur. Deshpande joined Vinoba Bhave's Bhudan movement in 1952. She undertook a 40,000 km padyatra across India to carry Gandhi's message of Gram Swaraj. She recognized that it was difficult to practice Gandhian principles, yet believed that doing so was the only way towards a truly democratic society. Desh Pandey was known to be the spirit behind peace marches in Punjab and Kashmir when violence was at its peak in those states. She served as the president of a historical organization, Harijan Sevak Sangh, from June 1983 till her death. She was associated with many social organizations and bodies. She founded Akhil Bharat Rachnatmak Samaj that won the National Communal Harmony Award in 2004. Nirmala Deshpande was a nominated member of the Rajya Sabha twice. Deshpande received the Rajiv Gandhi National Sadbhavna Award in 2005 and the Padma Vibhushan in 2006. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar AIR News Ke Sang. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Earth Sciences Minister Dr Jitendra Singh has launched air quality early warning system on the occasion of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav week speaking on the occasion Dr Singh said that the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology has developed a new decision support system and extended the ability of the existing air quality early warning system to have decision making capability for air quality management He said air warning system integrated with decision support system will become user friendly tool for air quality management in and around Delhi. Minister of State for Electronics and IT Rajiv Chandrasekhar today said that the post covid era provides a very different opportunity framework and India looks forward to seize this opportunity by fostering a close partnership between the government and the private sector. He said the government expects to be partners with the private sector in areas not just limited to soliciting business but even in areas of future technology development. The minister said this during his inaugural address at the International Conference and Exhibition on Digital Technologies Future Tech 2021 organized by the CII. The event is scheduled till the 27th of October and will revolve on five theme pillars: strategy, growth, resilience, inclusiveness and trust. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on Sunday. It will be the 82nd episode of the monthly radio program. The Prime Minister has invited people to share their ideas for this month's episode. People can share their views in the Namo app or MyGov open forum. They can also dial the toll-free number 18001117800 and record their message for the Prime Minister in either Hindi or English. The phone lines will remain open till Friday. Chief Executive Officer of Prasar Bharati Shashi Shekhar Vempati has refuted a media report in the Kannada press today that the attempts are being made to close down All India Radio and Doordarshan stations in the country. 
In an exclusive interview to AIR News, Nitavimpati made it clear that the HPT and LPT transmitting stations across the country are closed due to its obsolete technology and that there is no attempt to close down the program generating stations. Despite twice very clearly explaining the difference between Kalpuri, the content generation station of Tudarshan versus a transmitter, which is an outdated old analog transmitter being shut off. What is happening is people are mixing up the two things. These are two separate things. Tudarshan and Kalpuri will continue to generate local content. That local content generated by Tudarshan and Kalpuri will continue to be carried on DD Chandana. What is being closed in Kalpuri is the old analog TV transmitter, not the station. At the stock market, key indices snapped seven days of gains today while the forex market was closed for a holiday, a report from the business world. At the stock markets, after a solid opening in the morning and hitting another record intraday high, the Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange erased all its gains to end 50 points at 61,716 today. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange fell 58 points to 18,419. The forex market was closed for a holiday. Gold advanced 256 rupees to 46,580 rupees per 10 grams at Delhi's bullion market. And in the international market, Brent crude oil futures moved up 59 cents to trade at $84.92 a barrel. Anubha Rohatki for AIR News. A delegation of Maharashtra BJP leaders led by Union Minister Rao Sahib Danvi today met Union Minister for Home Affairs and Cooperation Amit Shah in New Delhi to apprise him about the issues faced by cooperative sugar factories in the state. Talking to reporters after the meeting, leader of opposition in the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly, Devendra Fadnavi said the cooperative sugar factories in the state are facing difficulties due to the COVID-19 situation and drought at some places. In the Men's T20 Cricket World Cup, India's second practice match will be played against Australia tomorrow in Dubai at 3.30pm. Last night, India defeated England by seven wickets in their first warm-up match. In the Group B qualifier match today at Oman's al Amirath Cricket Group, Scotland beat Papua New Guinea by 17 runs. After opting for bad, Scotland made 165 for 9 in stipulated 20 overs, while Papua New Guinea were all out for 148 runs in 19.3 overs. Meanwhile, another qualifier match in Group B between Bangladesh and Oman is underway at the same venue. Bangladesh were 112 for 4 in 15 overs when reports last came in. All India Radio will broadcast ball-by-ball commentary of the World Cup from the 23rd of this month. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will vary between 19 and 31 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature will be 24 degrees. Maximum expected to be around 33. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperature will vary between 25 and 35 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city will observe a minimum temperature of 25 degrees, maximum of around 30. Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky. Temperature will hover between 5 and 21 degrees. Jammu will also have a mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature will be 17, maximum around 33. Leh will have a mainly clear sky. Minimum and maximum temperature will be between 2 and 15 degrees. Gilgit will have a mainly clear sky too. Temperature will hover between 6 and 25 degrees. Muzaffarabad will also have a clear sky. The minimum temperature will be 13 degrees, maximum around 31. Vishakhapatnam will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city will observe a minimum temperature of 26 degrees, maximum of around 33. Bengaluru will have a generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature between 20 and 28 degrees. Tiruvananthapuram will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature will be 25, maximum. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport in Uttar Pradesh tomorrow to launch and lay foundation stones of various development projects. Prime Minister assures all possible help to heavy rain affected Uttarakhand rescue and relief operations in full swing. Met Department forecasts heavy to very heavy rainfall in some places in Kerala during next two days. Fishermen asked not to venture, venture into sea till 22nd of this month. 
Over 99 crore doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. Recovery rate at 98.14%. Sent our states and union territories to enhance second dose coverage of COVID vaccination. Maharashtra government relaxes COVID-19 restrictions, allows restaurants to function till midnight. Army Chief General M.M. Narvane visits forward areas along LOC in Jammu region to take stock of counter-infiltration operations. Eid e Milad on Nabi, birthday of Prophet Muhammad celebrated across the country and in T20 World Cup cricket, India to clash with Australia in second practice match in Dubai tomorrow. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.